Welcome back. Let's check an activity which can be performed to prove that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. Here we require two potted plants. As we did in the previous activity, place both the plants in a dark room for a day. Now you all know this is for tea starching. After one day, take both the plants and place each plant on separate glass plates. Next step is on the side of one plant, place a watch glass containing potassium hydroxide. Why potassium hydroxide? We are going to see at the end of this activity. Cover both the plants with a bell jar. You can see here in the image both the plants are covered with bell jars and next to one plant there is a watch glass containing potassium hydroxide. The next step is seal the bottoms of the bell jar with Vaseline so that the setup will become airtight. Now why do we have to make an airtight setup? This will ensure that plants do not have carbon dioxide available from air. They will utilize carbon dioxide present only inside the bell jars. Then keep both the plants in sunlight for some hours so that photosynthesis will occur. After that, pluck a leaf from each plant and perform the starch test as we performed earlier. We will just again quickly go through the procedure of the starch test. The leaves are first to be boiled in the boiling water to kill all the cells. Then they are dipped into the alcohol and the alcohol is boiled in a water bath to remove chlorophyll. After that, excess alcohol is removed by washing the leaves in hot water. And finally, iodine is poured on the leaves to check the presence of starch. After the starch test, you will notice that the leaf of the plant next to which potassium hydroxide was kept does not show the presence of starch. Now why this leaf does not show the presence of starch? Because the potassium hydroxide kept next to this plant absorbs all carbon dioxide present in the air inside the well jar. Let's check your understanding on the part we have covered. Then they are dipped into the alcohol and the alcohol is boiled in a water bath to remove chlorophyll. After that, excess alcohol is removed by washing the leaves in hot water. And finally, iodine is poured on the leaves to check the presence of starch. After the starch test, you will notice that the leaf of the plant next to which potassium hydroxide was kept does not show the presence of starch. Now why this leaf does not show the presence of starch? Because the potassium hydroxide kept next to this plant absorbs all carbon dioxide present in the air inside the well jar. Let's check your understanding on the part we have covered so far. State the significance of iodine in detecting the presence of starch. Are you ready with your answer? And the answer is iodine reacts with starch and forms an iodine starch complex which gives the leaf a blue color. The formation of blue color indicates the presence of starch. Now let's move to the mechanism of photosynthesis. There are four important events which together complete photosynthesis. These events are 1. Absorption of light 
by chlorophyll to conversion of light energy into the chemical energy three splitting of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen and four reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates the above mentioned events actually take place in two phases those phases are light dependent phase and light independent phase for the light dependent phase light is essential it takes place in thylakoids of the chloroplasts when the leaves are exposed to the sunlight the chlorophyll present in thylakoids traps the light energy now this light energy is then converted into chemical energy through series of chemical reactions water absorbed by the roots is split into hydrogen and oxygen in the presence of light energy this step is also called photolysis of water lysis is breakdown and photo means light since water molecule it split in the presence of light energy it is called photolysis during this process some electrons are released these electrons are used for the conversion of adp which is adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate to atp which is adenosine triphosphate the next is light independent phase it is called light independent phase because light energy is not required for the reactions to occur it is also known as biosynthetic phase now hydrogen which is formed during the splitting of water molecule is used here hydrogen reduces carbon dioxide into glucose through series of chemical reactions while oxygen which was formed earlier is released as a by product now i'm going to throw a question to you let's see if you can answer state the events which take place during the light dependent phase of photosynthesis on exposure to light chlorophyll absorbs light energy water is split but so far state the significance of iodine in detecting the presence of starch are you ready with your answer and the answer is iodine reacts with starch and forms an iodine starch complex which gives the leaf a blue color the formation of blue color indicates the presence of starch now let's move to the mechanism of photosynthesis there are four important events which together complete photosynthesis these events are one absorption of light by chlorophyll two conversion of light energy into the chemical energy three splitting of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen and four reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates the above mentioned events actually take place in two phases those phases are light dependent phase and light independent phase for the light dependent phase light is essential it takes place in thylakoids of the chloroplasts when the leaves are exposed to the sunlight the chlorophyll present in thylakoids traps the light energy now this light energy is then converted into chemical energy through series of chemical reactions water absorbed by the roots is split in atp remember glucose prepared in this process is converted into starch and then transported to different parts of the plants such as roots flowers stems 
fruits etc we have covered the autotrophic nutrition and its different aspects so far now let's move on to the second mode of nutrition which is heterotrophic nutrition in heterotrophic nutrition organisms cannot synthesize their own food they are dependent on other organisms for food hence it can be defined as the mode of nutrition in which organisms cannot synthesize their own food but they are dependent on other organisms for food is called heterotrophic nutrition i will repeat the definition again the mode of nutrition in which organisms cannot synthesize their own food but they are dependent on other organisms for food is called heterotrophic nutrition now all organisms other than some plants green algae and some photosynthetic bacteria are heterotrophs now not all heterotrophs show the same pattern of nutrition there are three different types of heterotrophic nutrition that is they are saprotrophic nutrition holozoic nutrition and parasitic nutrition first is saprotrophic nutrition in this type organisms break down food outside their body and absorb nutrients such type of nutrition is observed in mushrooms you might have seen fungus growing on stale bread or roti that fungus is called mucor even mucor shows the saprotrophic mode of nutrition the second type of heterotrophic nutrition is holozoic nutrition organisms which show holozoic nutrition consume food and then they break it down or digest the food inside their body amoeba and humans show holozoic mode of nutrition even paramecium shows the holozoic mode of nutrition the third type of heterotrophic nutrition is parasitic nutrition in parasitic nutrition organisms directly obtain food from other organisms now these other organisms are called hosts during this process parasites can harm the hosts examples leeches and mosquitoes are the examples of parasites in plants cascuta is the best known example of a parasite now you can see four pictures on the screen observe the images very carefully can you sort them according to their mode of nutrition here is your answer first image is of plant hence it will go under autotrophic nutrition you can see here the image of plant is placed under autotrophic nutrition to hydrogen and oxygen in the presence of light energy this step is also called photolysis of water lysis is breakdown and photo means light since water molecule is split in the presence of light energy it is called photolysis during this process some electrons are released these electrons are used for the conversion of adp which is adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate to atp which is adenosine triphosphate the next is light independent phase it is called light independent phase because light energy is not required for the reactions to occur it is also known as biosynthetic phase now hydrogen which is formed during the the white organism in the image is a kind of fungus 
which absorbs nutrients hence it will go under saprotrophic nutrition the next image is of a fish fish consumes food and then digests it hence splitting of water molecule is used here hydrogen reduces carbon dioxide into glucose through it shows the holozoic nutrition the fourth image is of cascuta which is a parasitic plant have you thought how an amoeba must be consuming its food amoeba is a unicellular organism what it does is it forms temporary projections from its cell surface these projections are called pseudopodia you can see here on the screen the second stage in the diagram shows pseudopodia we can also see the pseudopodia are covering a blue color food particle pseudopodia capture food fuse with it and form a food vacuole check the third stage in the diagram it shows the formation of food vacuole inside the food vacuole food is digested with the help of digestive enzymes after digestion nutrients are absorbed into the cytoplasm and then the undigested material is sent to the cell surface and from there it is removed out of the body this process is called ejection see the fourth stage in the diagram where you will see this process of ejection let's see how the nutrition takes place in one more organism which is paramecium now in paramecium food is taken at a specific spot this spot is called oral groove in the diagram on the right side you will see a depression which is marked as oral groove when the food enters the body of paramecium a food vacuole is formed now here in the diagram an intact food vacuole is not shown but at the end of oral groove you will see the formation of food vacuole has begun inside the food vacuole the food is digested with the help of certain enzymes after that the waste is moved towards the anal pore and from there it is thrown out of the body before we go ahead let's take a small break Thank you.